how did you get started in MMA? Were you a high school wrestler? I was not. It's like, uh, I was just a wild child just playing outside and roughhousing with the kids in the neighborhood. Um, I didn't really do any sports growing up. I know that I can be good at it, but um, with my parents, honestly, I'm like, I'm first generation here in the United States. My parents are from Mexico. And so them coming over here, you know, they were just trying to give us the best that they could, you know, so it was really hard for them to even have them extra resources and money to like put me in a sport or even to be able to go and pick me up and, you know, go back and forth, you know, so um, I don't know, I always liked it. Uh, the way that I started is like, um, I always liked watching it. Once the UFC came out, I was like, man, I just like became such a huge fan. I would always rough house. My brothers would always just like rough house, wrestle, whatever. And um, I uh, I went through <laughs> with probably a lot of people don't know this about me. I've talked about it before. Um, I got married when I was really young. Um, some people don't know this, but uh, at like um, at 19 and to my high school sweetheart who actually was in the Marine Corps. So um, I just kind of ended up playing the housewife. Like I was just going to go do that because we were getting moved around and being stationed. And it was one of those things where, you know, we have to put his career first, you know, um, you know, he's out there. He, it was during that time when, you know, it was pretty serious in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was making deployments and, you know, um, but ultimately, you know, playing that side, we didn't end up working out. Um, and I ended up moving back. And I just remember feeling kind of depressed because I had like, I just, you know, you just think that, you know, that's just going to be your life for, but you're young and dumb. And anyway, that was really sad. I wasn't happy with myself. I was working at a really, really crappy job at that time. Um, and, uh, there is a gym. There is a gym a block away. And one day I just said, Cynthia, you got to go do something with yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Go to the gym. You know, it can very well just make you happy. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think I was like, hey, you know, I might be a professional fighter or, you know, anything. I just, just, just to like go. get out of the house and work I, out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because for anybody, even if they don't do this professionally, I mean, I truly believe that martial arts help you out through life, you know? And oh yeah, it'll make you a better person. It'll bring you up. And so <laughs> yeah. I felt like that was just one of those. It, yeah, and, and it definitely helps out. Like if you get depressed and stuff like that, especially releasing all those endorphins, you know, you're mad, you're like punching the bag. And I was like, I just felt great. I was like, man, this feels amazing to just like go hit things, you know? <laughs> and, um, um, and then I just never left, man. It was just... It was the most incredible feeling, dude. Like, I would get frustrated, and I would cry, and I'd get off the mats, but then I would just get right back in it. And I just never quit. And the rest you of the history, love with training. Like, I've just been doing whatever I can. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Nice. <laughs> and it became my, my new love. <laughs> nice. So, so that's how I started. I mean, there's, there's the, like, you know, a, a lot of things, but definitely... Um, I started late when I was 23. So definitely not the usual story of when like people say, how do you start martial arts? We must have a background in something else. I'm like, no, just grew up beside San Jose. I got this little bit of an attitude coming from here. You know, we don't back down no matter what. And now we just needed to add the training. And, and yeah, you know, I've always, I felt like I've always just been a fighter. Um, so I, I think, you know, just in life with things going on and, um, Finally, I had a, been able to find a canvas and, you know, where I can express this in, in, the, in the right way. And, and fighting MMA mixed martial arts is definitely my calling, for sure. Of your art, yeah, yeah, you found it. And I do, like, I, I see you training and you are very athletic. Like, you have the, the physicality, you know, you have the build, you have the endurance, <laughs> the strength, the flexibility. Like, you have all the, like, athletic elements. And I will tell you that actually Javier Mendez himself... His, uh, I think his parents are also Mexican immigrants. He's from San Jose mm -hmm. and he grew up with no sports because there was just no money for sports. And so he kind of had the same thing where he was just like, he just kind of fell into uh, kickboxing and then that grew into MMA as he went along with it. So, you know, if you ever have a chance to talk to Hob about his story and how he ended up in MMA, I feel like it sounds like 
really similar to yours. Cause I hear all these different stories about people who were like, Oh, I was going to be a baseball star. And my, you know, whatever people who grow up <laughs> yeah. like in the suburbs with like sports parents or people who grow up with like parents who own gyms or stuff. And I'm just like, you had like every kind of advantage, but I feel like somebody like you or somebody like Hav, it's like, you clearly, you have like the talent and the drive and the will to do it. And like, you come so far, like, you know, for starting, cause like you say you started at 23 and I hear coaches all the time saying like, Oh, if you want to be a pro, you have to start young or whatever. But like, you're, like, I mean, you're in the UFC, you're what, like eight and one, right? So yeah, I'm eight amazing. and one and one. Yeah, no, I would say, uh, dude, just, uh, you know, believing in yourself, self-belief, you know, is, is, is very important. Important. And um, I think that's what got me as far as it did because I just, I just, it just didn't matter. You could allow it to like let all these ideas and doubt set in, and that's probably going to prevent you, you know, fear to even follow through or think that you can do something like that. Um, I would have definitely said that um, the person I was before fighting, I was not a very confident person at all. I was very, very insecure, but fighting kind of gave me that. It, it gave me like it just created this like real fighting spirit and um I would say definitely martial arts saved my life um I definitely want to be a role model to like all the kids here in the neighborhood that didn't have the same access to the same support that I didn't have not because my parents didn't want to they just they just couldn't afford to or be able to spend that time and um my goal has uh, has been since the beginning I always thought I was like man I just set myself I just decided one day like I said like I just made this commitment. I was like, Cynthia, no matter what happens, whether good or bad, like you're going to be a world champion. It doesn't matter. You're going to have a bad day. It doesn't matter. You just accept it. Your purpose is you're going to be a professional fighter and you're going to use this platform and you're going to be able to have people in your head. So I was like, I want to become a world champion. I have a belt and then I'm going to go back to my high school and I'm going to put this right in front of, you know, all the kids there and show them, you know, that you don't you don't need all that you know if you really want to believe in yourself then you can do that so that's something definitely I want to start and not being here in San Jose in California um hopefully I can get a program going on where I can definitely help the kids out and I definitely want to work with girls a lot um I want to I want to be able to huh can I let you know about something um aka Sunnyvale actually already has a program like that um, for anybody in uh, Sunnyvale or San Jose who's a youth, um, I think it's like age five to 17, something like that. They can train at AKA Sunnyvale if they're low income for free and get a free uniform. Dude, that's so, awesome. I yeah. actually was not aware of that, you know? Yeah. So um, if you want to talk to AKA Sunnyvale, Aunt Doe, who you train with all the time, Anthony Doe, he's a, he's a big part of that program. Oh man, that's great. No, I'm definitely going to reach out to him and, and get it started. Um, yeah. So like talk I, to them, yeah. like, like be like, I want to do a program for girls. And like, I'm, I'm almost certain that they would hook that up. So yeah. Yeah. No, that would be great. I'm actually pretty excited about even just, um, hoping that we can all do together. I want to get Mallory on board, you know, Mallory Morton. Uh, uh, she's the you know UFC strawweight uh, uh, new UFC strawweight fighter um, who's Duran Wynn Duran Wynn's uh, you know girlfriend and so she's out here now and then of course Brianna's here and so I'm hoping we can just like you know get a good little solid of that of, of being able to like you know totally we got absolutely. some bad girls walking here yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, Shy um, at uh Shy, she just got her brown belt, the um the front desk lady at AKA too. She does she's really great at supporting uh women's jujitsu. So I'm sure her and uh, Amber would probably help you out on that too. And Allison. I like too. Yeah, no, she's great. Yeah. Yeah, women. Um, what else? Let's see. I've got some more questions for you. Oh, is Mallory moving here? She's from uh Cat Zingano at, in Denver, right? Colorado. Col- yeah, Denver, Denver, Colorado, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, no, I think she's moving here. I oh, that would sure be dope. She hasn't awesome. like fully move all her stuff, but yeah, as far as uh, I know I she's been um, going back and forth a bunch. Yeah. They're supposed to be moving out here, so 
That'd be dope. Yeah. Yay. No, I think she's women. moving out here. I think she's just, yeah, going back and forth. It would be great to have yeah. more women at AKA. I'm always But you just want to just kind of make full circle. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Me and Brianna yeah. have been like, I'm, me and Brianna and... Sorry, it's like delayed. I know the delay. Like, so it's okay. Go for it. I love Brianna. She's amazing. Yeah, no. So Brianna, obviously, she's 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 amazing. She's probably one of the first girls that um, I think a couple months in, I like I knew of her. We probably trained one time, like a long, long time ago. Um, but uh, ever since then, there's you know talks about whether we were going to compete against each other or train together. You know, we've always kind of like tried to, and it just like kind of like never happened or was aligned or played, and so. Even this last class, yeah, last year, even when I was in Sacramento, and I think, um, um, you know, she was trying to get ready for some fights, and me and Aunt were talking. We're like, let's do some cross training, and uh, we've been trying to do this for the longest time. And I'll finally, I'm back home, and we're gonna get to do that. Um, I know she's going up from some injuries, but I'm pretty excited to start training with her. And then yeah, she's a with beast. Mallory, me and with with um, Mallory, she we always kind of knew of each other, but she was in Colorado. I didn't even know. I knew she would go stay in Durham, but I never like, figured she like she would come out here in San Jose. Uh, so, so you guys have the same manager, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's cool. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it just makes full circle. Me and Mallory, you know, we get along with each other. We're like super. We're fans of each other, but now we get to train. So um, it's now pretty cool. I'm really excited. And be teammates. That'll be awesome. Yeah, but are you so? Are you gonna stay in straw weight? Or are you moving up to one twenty fives? Um, as of right now, we have decided to move up to one twenty fives. Um, so then you and Brianna guess, aren't gonna fight because she's. I think she's staying at one fifteen. Yeah, correct. I mean, yeah, Mallory and Brianna both are at straw weight. Um, so for right now, yeah, we're one twenty fives. There's no more weight. I, I don't really have like a big weight cut at one twenty fives. One fifteens is definitely hard for me. Um, I do think that it is something I can do, but it, it uh, there can't be any like accidents, like I don't know mistakes in there. Like it was just really hard. Um, so it just it's the best thing for me to do one twenty fives because there's just I think everybody should go back up closer to the walking weight. I walk around at like 130 when I'm like in shape, shape. And like when I'm like ready to go, you know, and it was only like a five pound weight cut, which is really easy to like do for, you know, really, really easy weight cut in comparison to other people. Um, when I was cutting down to 115s, there was times where I would even cut 17 pounds in a week. And um, Ouch. It, yeah, that was probably one of the toughest weight cuts I did. That's and I scary. <laughs> made the weight. One time I had 10 pounds to only... Um, cut and I missed weight you know so it's just it's just the right thing for me to do I don't know how my body's going to react it's changed now that I'm getting older so I just feel like the safer thing for me to do is to to definitely move up to 125s and And I was looking at your fight record and I saw that you actually had a win against Aspen Ladd as your last amateur fight and she fights at 136 so (laughs) <laughs> yeah and but her body has also uh, uh changed a lot um yeah no I fought at 125s a lot um and then um my body started changing I think you know like I said I started at 23 I didn't have like the whole athletic like build body I was just naturally gifted like I'm strong mm-hmm. but it, you know people have different bodies when they've been doing sports their whole life you know they're just mm-hmm. like you know I I didn't so my body started changing my, you know, all the fat started going, turning into muscle. And I was just like, all right, cool. You know, I'm, you know, so that's why I had eventually decided, okay, I can do 115 because there was no 125s when I got into the UFC. So I was like, I can do this. Everybody, I see everybody do crazy because like if they can suffer, I can suffer, you know, but then now I'm like, realizing, I'm like, this is, this is not good for longevity. Right. <laughs> I'm just by closer to my weight class. Yeah. And I've seen, um, some of the, some of the fighters that fight for one and they don't have weight cuts. They do like year round weight checks. They do hydration tests. And so all the weight classes are like 10 pounds heavier over there. So. Yeah, I did see that. I did. See, start doing, um, I know that there's still kind of some discrepancy with that. Cause I know that some fighters still kind of try to get away with that. Like yeah. they still cut weight. Um, I think, uh, 
but um, hopefully everybody eventually all this sport starts implementing that that um, you know just so it's safer safer you know we really want this like to be a sport it's growing rapidly obviously growing sports in the world right now and um, I think I think it's it's and I think it's heading that way because I think uh, obviously there's a lot of jobs there's a lot of things that are going into that are opening up where we can really treat this as a, one of the best sports in the world where, you know, we have the UFCPI, they're taking care of us, they're making sure that our, you know, diet is right, that the physical therapy is right, you know, and, and you know, that our bodies are good. And so before when it's, it was like old school and it wasn't so huge, it was kind of like, you would just do drastic things just to get it done however way. And now we're just cracking, we're making sure we do everything the right way in the best way we can. So, yeah. Yeah, you got to take care of the athletes. Without the athletes, there's no, without the fighters, there's no fights, man. Yeah. And then on top of that, I think it was like crazy. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. I mean, when I first got in, into the UFC, I fought seven times in one year, but not in the UFC, but just in that one year when I first got in. Um, and I would still just cut the weight. I would make, I made the weight. It wasn't until I think I had a long layoff and um, was going through transition of, uh, just dealing with some stuffs and setbacks that I miss weight after, but, um, I just didn't know. I was like, how do I do that? You know? And now I'm like thinking about it because I was like, I don't know how you can just keep putting yourself in that. Cause I do want to fight a lot. So now at 125, I'll be able to fight like, you know, however many times, you know, I think I'm hopefully, if I can have anywhere to three to five fights a year, like, man, that's golden for me. Like I'm, I'm happy there. Um, so once the quarantine's open and we can start busting out those fights and we'll get to the top and, uh, you know, <laughs> nice. I'll be yeah. able to fight. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for this Corona. Yeah. It seems like you were putting yourself in all the right positions. You got the right management. You're, you know, you got the right support system at home. You're back in your hometown. You got the right team, the right coaches. So it really seems like you're putting it all together and that the only thing holding you back at this moment is this quarantine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, but we're going to continue. And, you know, I'm going to obviously um, make sure that, you know, we don't just get lazy during this time. And then I'm going to, you know, continue to work. I did buy some mats. So they're going to be getting here next week. I got a heavy bag. And I want to make sure that when those doors open at the gym, <laughs> I'm not gonna be out. Gonna be ready to bang down. Straight to work. Exactly, dog. I'm gonna be probably <laughs> sleeping outside. <laughs> Does it open yet? Does it open yet? I might get arrested. You be like one of those parking lot fans room. of yourself. <laughs> Actually, yeah, probably. Not. I think so. I might. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Man. Well, we can't wait to see you back in the gym. Do you have chickens? Is that what that is? No, I have a, we, I'm one of my dad's uh, parrots. So oh, he just kind of okay. dances around and he makes noise. I was trying to like put him away like, wow. So he wouldn't be making a bunch of noise, but. It's cool. I think loud. everybody's used to it now. Like every, when I watch the news, it's like the weather report is always like some meteorologist in their house with their kids because like everybody's dealing with the quarantine. I mean, the whole world is. So it's been really fun because you get to see like the inside of everybody's houses and like meet all their kids and stuff. <laughs> anyway thank you yeah so no that's what I was thinking I was like okay if I'm gonna go inside yeah do you have any sponsors oh, man, or anybody so you so plug? It's, it's okay um well uh I didn't really like sponsors say I just want to a, a lot of people I really appreciate the support especially in these times and I really just want and I hope that everybody can stay safe out there stay home so we can get this quarantine lift and get back in the gym and we can train. So um, just shout out to all the people stay long, and we're definitely going to, you know, get through this together. For sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And I'll try to get it uploaded as soon too. as I can. <laughs> and can't wait oh, to be today. back in the gym. Yeah. Yes. Can't wait to have you in there too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.